I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. All right, today is Friday, November 6th. We're at the Tortilla Trailhead, about to enter the Superstition Wilderness for about a three-day hike. Uh, we're gonna head out on Peter's Trail and head out to Charlie Boy Springs today. I think it's gonna be about uh, 10 to 11 miles. And uh, yeah, it looks like we have some awesome weather out here. It's cloudy. It was supposed to be really hot and it's not, so pretty stoked. Uh, you'll notice I got a, a buddy with me. Uh, David? Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, David? Yeah, I'm David. Um, just another local backpacker here out of Scottsdale. Um, this is my my second time going in here. First time going in with uh, with our guy here, but uh, yeah, looking forward to it, man. Last time I was in here, it was pretty hot, and we got great weather. Yeah, I agree. Why don't you uh, tell everybody uh, how we met, because it's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, so I've actually, uh, I'm kind of new to backpacking. Um, about a year and a half ago, uh, I started doing day hiking in Sedona and you know around Scottsdale and you know started getting the bug and uh, started looking into backpacking and got in on YouTube and found you know Ellery's channel here and um, I didn't know anything about it you know I didn't know anything about Arizona I don't know anything about the topography or what you needed out here so I just started watching YouTube videos and literally used it as research I mean I'd map out different routes on you know my map and I started doing little overnight you know weekend trips by myself and uh, ended up bumping into them in yeah. Marsh Valley one day. Yeah, we were, uh, so basically, if you go back, I had a trip video in the Superstitions from uh, January of 2020, and uh, it's not on camera, but one of the days I was packing up, uh, this guy comes rolling up to my campsite, he kind of did a double take. Yeah. Kind of like, he passed by, kind of looked at me as he passed by, and then he like, turned back around and came in. Uh, yeah, I was you know, like, hey, you're Wild West Hikes. Yeah, and he was so. like, uh, yeah, I was like, dude. So yeah. we stroke up a conversation and, you know about how he was the reason I actually got into backpacking in Arizona and since then I probably got about 350 plus miles in all over the state so, so that's why I make these videos so pretty awesome to be able to hike with a fellow viewer and and just sort of experience that sort of thing so anyway uh, let's uh, get hiking and I'll talk more about the trip as we go all right on. Here is the four peaks up in the distance. So we got a about three mile road walk down to the uh, actual trail, but I only kind of barely qualify this as a road. You know the name of this mountain? Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> Don't really know what the name of this mountain is called, but it is big and I imagine if you were to go down into that drainage there you would hit the uh, I'm not sure if the lake is behind it or in front of it I guess we'll never know because the AZ-88 highway is closed past that point all right so that down there is Tortilla Creek which is not flowing right now but in the spring it would be flowing and eventually we're gonna meet up with this creek once we get down to the bottom at the uh, ranch at Peter's Trail. So I bet you if the color of this rock was red and not yellow, you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference from uh, between Arizona and uh, Utah. Some cliffs coming up here.
What do you think of this, David? It's pretty awesome, isn't it? Absolutely. This is like, when you get back here, it's like untouched wilderness, it feels like. Like, yeah. you know, you'd be the first person back here in a hundred years. I love it. I really think this is what people think of when they think of the Old West. Absolutely. So we're down kind of in the low spot on our way to Peter's Trail now. So I think we're probably a couple miles in and I thought I'd take the opportunity now that we're down low to talk more about the trip plan. So today we're walking a little over 10 or 11 miles into Charlie Boy Spring where I know that there's going to be good cold clear water over there and we camp there for the night. Um, tomorrow on day two we're going to be Following uh, LaBarge Canyon, we're going to go up Upper LaBarge Canyon into the area by um, I think Brad's Water and hopefully we'll be able to camp over there. I'm not absolutely 100% sure about the water at uh, Brad's, but uh, I've never heard of it going dry. It's like a big cave with a deep pool of water in it, um, but uh, we might be having to carry a little bit more water than usual just to make sure because uh, in the desert, if you don't find water, you kind of die, so <laughs> we're going to have to carry some water tomorrow. And then uh, on the last day of the trip, we're going to follow from uh, Brad's Water up to Hooley Bacon Trail and take that back up here where we are at now, back to the trailhead. That's the trip. All right, so I think we got into Tortilla Well. This is like old part of the structure. There's actually quite a few sort of old structural remnants left of this. And then up there, you'll see that we're gonna come to this sort of old water tower. Here's the uh, remnants, one of the tanks at Tortilla Well. I've been out here a number of times and I've always checked it and I've never seen water in it and uh, we actually haven't had rain out here in ages so there's no chance of there being any water in here on this trip. Alright we've reached the junction with Peter's Trail 105. We're going to head down a canyon and um, we're going to basically follow the Tortilla Creek drainage a ways and then we're going to start climbing. So one of the ways you can tell we're in a drought is when these cottonwoods stop being bright green and they start looking like they look right here. Um, I don't expect to get through this without losing some blood. And uh, probably gonna have to be doing some bushwhacking here for a little bit because I know for a fact this trail has not been cleared. It's probably something approaching about a year. Yeah, because I remember this was all flowing, so I had to cross here. Yeah, so we're going to have some dry creek beds to cross here. and But we're going to be getting into some really sharp, deep cat claw territory on this. The, uh, we're going to be using the term trail in quotation marks from here on out. <laughs> we decided it would be easier to just walk in the creek bed for a little bit, so... Walk in it? Yeah. I think so. We'll have to figure out a way. Way through. I know. This is where the adventure begins. Yeah, all this is kind of like volcanic rock. I think it's like super interesting. Cloudy skies and Peter's Canyon. Is this Peter's? No, this is not Peter's Canyon. What's David? Yeah. What's the name of this canyon? On the spot. 
Let me check them out. I have no idea. I figured that so. one was a good content. <laughs> Let's see what so, this is, uh, I guess it's just Tortilla Creek, right? Well, that's what it, yeah. I mean, nothing's really labeled. Yeah. We just went past the well. Yeah, all right. So we got Tortilla Creek, but we're heading down into towards Indian Spring. All right, the map has informed us this is just called Tortilla Creek. So we're not going to be in Peters Canyon for quite a ways. I think we have to climb up uh, way up high past Tortilla Mountain. There's going to be a lot of tortillas on this trip. Um, I'm not eating any, but there's still going to be a lot of tortillas. That's Already I'm pretty, pretty cut up here from the cat's claw too. Yeah, these rocks are really interesting. It's just kind of a pockmarked, eroded. I don't know what this is. It's some type of volcanic rock. It almost resembles like pumice in a way. I think David is currently wrestling with what I just wrestled with. We're both losing a decent amount of blood already here. Getting there. Yeah. But uh, at least it's uh, pretty scenery out here. All right, so I talk all about bushwhacking through cat's claws and the superstitions and really the far west superstitions are the least of your worries. It's when you get out here where it starts getting tough. So, I mean, we are talking about making progress in feet, not miles here. This is proven to be pretty thick. Um, I've been on Peter's Trail a number of times and it's Never been quite this bad before, but we're making some headway. But yeah, I wanted to show the shot because there is an arch up there. I was gonna try to zoom in. Set my camera up here and I ate right here. Yeah. And it's the old people came around this corner. I was like, oh, they came from over there. Yeah, this is a cool spot. There is a cave over there. And the trail was supposed to go through there, but today there's no flow in this canyon. Normally it would be too deep to walk through. You'd have to swim through it. But uh, kind of going around all that on this one. We are making our turn heading up towards Tortilla Mountain. So we're going to be doing a bunch of climbing now up towards Peter's Mesa. Pretty epic shot of the mountains here. So we have been steadily sort of getting lost and then getting ourselves unlost through all this bushwhacking through the last hour or so. But I think we're about to cross the creek bed for the last time, according to David. And uh, then it should start opening up as we start hiking uh, uphill. All right, so Peter's trail is pretty rough, but uh, getting some respite here. Um, after that very last creek crossing, you kind of Gonna kind of hang left of the creek now as we make our way up by uh, Tortilla Mountain. And uh, we're gonna have to push our way through some trees, but I think we're through the worst of the bushwhacking and starting to make slightly faster miles now. Pretty awesome view. Really making our way up towards Tortilla Mountain. We were 
coming across is this glass cup. I don't know what that's about. But you see all sorts of stuff out here. The cowboys left out here. Who even knows? This might be out here for a hundred years. Yeah, we're kind of, I think we're close to Cane Spring. Kind of some gnarly burnt up trees up here. Kind of a little bit reminiscent of like kind of the red tanks burn that I showed on a previous video. We're still making up our ascent up to what's it called? I think it's Portia Mountain, which is a mountain that's right above Dave's head. I'm going to zoom in on. We're going to go up a pass that passes to the left of this thing. We got some more fire burn and a David just was kind enough to bury somebody else's butt wipe. Didn't expect to see a bite butt wipe on a trail this remote out here, but it just goes to show humans leave no stone unturned. And we are climbing up the uh, sort of kind of, I, I don't want to call it slick rock, but close enough. Just kind of this steep slick rock part we got to go up now. And we are making our way up towards the pass by Tortilla Mountain. So I think that one is Tortilla Mountain. There's one to the left of it. I have no clue. But I know that is definitely some kind of cave up there. I think we are almost topping out. We're going up the pass still. Okay, we are now on top of the pass. I don't know if this pass even has a name, but has a pretty cool view up here. And, uh, this is again, it's Tortilla Mountain. Looking back the way we kind of came from. Way, way out there is where the trailhead is. So sorry for the wind noise. It is pretty windy today, but uh, up here on this pass, but that ahead of us is uh, part of Peter's Mesa, and so we are going to have to go down into that canyon that's yeah, kind of at the foot of it, and then we will be climbing kind of back up around kind of the right side of that. And then on the other side of that is the spring where we'll be camping. That's the direction we're going. If you look really hard, there's a couple of kind of little mini arches, kind of some windows up there. So we're kind of gonna go around the left side of this pass up ahead. a wildfire that came through here about a year and a half ago but I think uh, the wildfire just kind of enhanced the effect of the natural color of the, of the rocks. We are to the top of our pass up here. So 
there's kind of this interesting rocky ridge line that we're gonna sort of cross over. Uh, this is the way back we came from. And, uh, that's the high point of Peter's Mesa. We are not going up that high. But yeah, it's kind of this interesting little pass to go through here. And uh, what's interesting is there's kind of this little campsite sort of, I don't know what you even want to call this, little wall. It's like an old cowboy camp or something. Yeah, kind of a... Because look. It's got to have been like an old cowboy camp. The there's a... Uh, here. There's uh, the wind. cowboy wrappers. All right, so that hill in the foreground that you see, that's what we have to climb. So we're going to go down into this valley in front of us. Um, I believe this is Peter's Canyon in front of us here. So basically what we're going to do is uh, we're going to climb this and we're going to go down the other side. On the other side of that Peter's Mesa will be Charlie Boy Canyon where we will be camping hopefully in a couple of hours. And check out these uh, mountains here. Keeps acting like it wants to rain. Not expecting any rain today, but probably gonna get some tomorrow. It is dead quiet out here. We were getting a ton of wind up on the previous pass, but all of a sudden now, it is just like you can hear a pin drop. Still a lot of charred trees from the Woodbury fire over a year and a half ago out here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got lost on this part going down too. I think I beelined it down the hill. Looks like we're pretty much getting flipped off by this trail. I mean, we've been getting flipped off by this trail all day long, but now we're actually getting flipped off by the rocks now. Even though it is late in the day, we have a pretty good view of Weaver's Needle now. So that means we have finally looped around and are heading down into like the Labarge Canyon drainage. So I think we have about a mile and a half to two miles left before we hit Charlie Boy Spring. Um, I think we only have about 45 minutes of light left. So we're going to kind of book it down Peter's Mason now. Well, there's our uh, majestic sunset for night number one. Not much of a sunset today, but uh, make do with what you get. All right, we've made camp. Um, so we actually had to walk down uh, Peter's Mesa in the dark. Um, I think we hiked for, what was it, probably about an hour in the dark. At least an hour in At the dark. At least an hour. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, that, that was, uh, that hike kicked our asses, um, to put it mildly. Um, it was basically overgrown the entire time. We had like uh, cat's claw just just tearing at us the entire time. We got cactus in our shoes, and um, yeah, this is probably about the most overgrown that I've seen Peter's uh, trail, and I've been on it a few times now. Yeah, um, my my second time being on, and it was worse than the time before. <laughs> yeah. And I'd went in right after the Woodbury fire, so um, yeah, definitely rough. I mean, slippery cut up blood i mean 
I would say like the definition of a wilderness experience, not necessarily a, a good or a bad thing, just very much like wild. Wild bushwhacking. Wild bushwhacking the entire yeah. time. A uh, good amount of route finding since like the overgrowth covered up a lot of the cairns that were out there and the trail was just basically unrecognizable. Yeah. Uh, so the rest of the hiking on this trip shouldn't be anything like that. It's probably gonna be pretty easy walking, which we're pretty happy about. So yeah, so. Uh, we're cooking for the night and uh, not gonna film much else, so I think this calls it a night for night one. See you guys tomorrow. That was good enough, right? Yeah, cool. Because I can't even use brain cells right now. <laughs> well, good morning. It is day two, uh, we're just making breakfast here. Um, today's hike is gonna be pretty short, so we're just kinda taking our time getting up this morning. Um, so last night, um, it rained kinda just on and off constantly. Um, it was actually pretty awesome, it helped me sleep, I don't know about you. Yeah, no, it was great. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't hard rain or anything, just got a, got a little bit of wind, but nothing crazy. So, yeah, we got some thunder going on here, and. Uh, probably is going to just rain on and off all day the rest of the trip is what I imagine. So um, today's plan is to head up the Dutchman Trail and then we're going to connect up with Red Tanks. And I think we're going to go up Upper Labarge Canyon today and go up to Brad's Water and camp up there. Um, I think it's about seven miles, uh, maybe eight. I'm not really sure. So yeah, we're just going to hang out for a while, make breakfast, uh, kind of wait and see what this weather does and then uh, start hiking later on. So this is the view from the Charlie Boy Spring campsite. Um, I believe that's Bluff Spring Mountain ahead of us here. Okay, so I thought I'd show kind of this little campsite and kind of show uh, Charlie Boy Spring. Uh, it's one of the only uh, reliable water sources in the Superstition Wilderness. Uh, so I thought I'd show because it does confuse a lot of people. Um, I know I've actually had to show people pretty recently while I was hiking out here um, how to even get to it. Common sense just comes around. <laughs> I think Dave's having some uh, technical issues with his cook kit. Yeah, so going back to Charlie Boy Springs, there's kind of a little sp spur trail, and uh, there's actually a few places to set down tents in here. And there's a nice little drainage up in here. It's kind of almost like a little kind of oasis sort of jungle type environment. It's very different from the rest of the superstitions. And uh, when you approach it, suddenly the temperature drops about two or three degrees. It's quite noticeable. And you make your way through some sort of dense brush. It's not really bad though. Here. And so here is Charlie Boy Spring. This water is really deep, clear, and cool. And it's one of the only really reliable water sources in the Superstition Wilderness. So yeah, a lot of people rely on the spring and so does all the wildlife. So there's actually quite a bit of animal activity out here as well. Skunks and mice and yeah, that sort of thing. So yesterday on day one, uh, we started off at the Tortilla Trailhead here, and we followed this road down about three miles, and then we connected up with the Peters Trail 105. This first kind of mile or so of Peters Trail that follows Tortilla Creek proved to be pretty difficult. It was um, basically all route finding with a lot of bushwhacking through really sharp cat's claw, but we got through it, and eventually we started climbing up out by Tortilla Mountain here, um, hit this pass right here. Actually, there was a couple passes through here, and eventually we made our way down into Peters Canyon, which also proved to be really difficult and slow going. It was just basically all route finding. Uh, most of the trail's overgrown, a lot of the cairns have been knocked down, and um, just a lot of the ones that are even remaining are just covered up by really tall grasses. So we just kind of, it's kind of sort of a choose your own adventure type of hike. Uh, eventually we climbed up the very last pass up to the top of Peter's Mesa. 
And then around this time, when we were at the top of Peter's Mesa, it started getting dark. So I really didn't film much up there, pretty much just the sunset. And we hiked down in the dark for about an hour uh, down Peter's Trail, eventually connecting up with Dutchman Trail 104. And then we got to Charlie Boy Spring in the kind of the middle of the night <laughs> around 7.30. And that's kind of where we're currently camped. So the plan for today, day two, is we're going to head back out on Dutchman Trail and we're going to connect up at Labarge Spring with Red Tanks Trail 107 and keep following that up Labarge Canyon. And eventually we're going to turn off and head up Upper Labarge Box Canyon. And this is really pretty and very scenic. A good amount of climbing through here and I'm hoping it's not going to be crazy overgrown. Eventually we're going to connect up with Hooley Bacon Trail and I think we're going to go past it and try to go up to Brad's Water um, but I think we're going to camp somewhere in this vicinity here today. Okay it's time to get on the trail so we're going to hike probably around six miles I looked at the map it's really not very far so we're going to head out along the Dutchman Trail going what's that east? East. East and then we're going to turn left northwards to, to uh, Upper Labarge Canyon and plan to make camp near Brad's water today, so here we go. <laughs> ah. A little bushwhacking to get out of Charlie Boy. So this is part of why people don't find it. A little bit rough. Alright, so you might have noticed it's looking pretty kind of dusty or foggy or I'm not really sure. I'm trying to speculate what this is. Is dust or fog or smoke? And it's weird without water. I know I'm saying that. Before. Yeah. But all my hiking I've done back here is always been flowing. Most of the time I come out here, this creek will be flowing pretty strong. Yeah. So it's really interesting coming out here with all the fire burn and no water at all and all this dry grass. Lots of fire burn on the trail today. We've gone through some pretty nasty fire burn. Pretty sharp stuff. All dead. Yeah. This area is all dead.
kind of passing by the area of uh, Oak Spring. Oak Spring's kind of hard to find. I've heard a rumor that there's pools in here, but I'm really not sure how to even get to it. Looks like some pretty serious bushwhacking, but here's some awesome camping up in this area. Here's something interesting. This tree curved downwards because of the fire. This is one of those big cottonwood trees. And uh, yeah, An awesome power fire. This burn, man. Is it crazy? Looking pretty bleak out here. All right, so we are almost to Labarge Spring. We're gonna continue towards that direction, and uh, I think Labarge Spring should be running. Probably plenty of water out there right now. So, look at this saguaro here. So we figured out that both the Woodbury fire and the, um, what was it called, the Superstition fire, I think, or it might have been the Toya fire, both came through this area. And somehow Labarge Spring was still saved, but check out this cactus, this big saguaro that fell over. It's all kind of in segments now. Yeah, probably 30, 40 feet. We can speculate. Over there. Yeah, I guess there's more back there. So right here we got um, on the trail up to this up to a Labarge Spring. We got this big diamond back, sort of just slowly slithering his way on up. So I'm not sure if we're gonna go up to the actual spring now, but uh, we got plenty of water on us, so not a big deal. Almost to the opening of Trap Canyon. So this is the opening to Trap Canyon. I've probably shown this like half a dozen times now on my channel. <laughs> Keep saying that I'll eventually go up this thing. Still have not gotten around to that. Mainly because I feel like the bushwhacking is going to be pretty terrible. But maybe someday. And if you notice down in the bottom there's kind of like a cave. Probably some ruins in there or something. I think there's probably like a wall. About to enter the last section of Lower Labarge Canyon before we start hitting Upper Labarge. So we're going up this uh, canyon, kind of the opening right here in the center of the frame. And this is, I believe, Picacho Butte. And we have some interesting rock features on the sides of these mountains.
All right, we're now starting to head up into Upper La Barge Canyon. And Dave and I were just debating whether these were called spires or hoodoos, but I think we decided they're called spires. We are climbing up Upper La Barge Canyon now, and it's not really that long of a canyon, so I think we might be camping in the next hour to hour and a half. Basically, we just have to finish going up this canyon and then walk a short distance, like something like half to three quarters of a mile to get to Brad's water from there. I think it's worth mentioning that we were really slowed down back there by uh, some uh, down cat's claws. It looked like they were trimmed by a trail crew, but Looks like nobody bothered to actually pick them up. They're basically just attaching themselves to our legs as we walked along. It really slowed us down. But uh, today is kind of supposed to be the short day of the trip. Um, it really is only like about six miles. But even so, with just how overgrown everything's been with all the sharp stuff, it has been taking us a little while longer than expected. But that's just how it goes sometimes. Picacho Butte is one of my favorite things to film out here. It's just this really cool looking mountain. This is the very top of the spire on Picacho Butte. I never noticed this before. I've actually filmed it a number of times and there's like a big cave up there. Wonder what's in it. All right, so we continue to bushwhack through this stuff. There's a big cairn around here, I think. Make your way around this. Yeah, I see a big cairn. Probably the most overgrown part of the whole thing. making the climb up Upper La Barge Canyon. It's kind of like a sort of rocky overgrown staircase all the way to the top. But uh, now that we're not bushwhacking as much, we're still making some pretty good time now. almost kind of see where our destination is those mountains that are a little bit off in the distance kind of at the end of the canyon
almost through Upper La Barge Canyon. I think what we decided to do probably is camp near the junction of Pooley Bacon Trail. That way that lowers our mileage for tomorrow. And we're gonna set up camp probably and then walk over to Brad's water and see, check out the water over there. We have found a campsite for night number two. We kind of camped sort of just past the junction with Hooley Bacon Trail. Kind of at this flat spot over here with the fire ring. Just kind of at the foot of Picacho Butte. We actually have a pretty awesome view from here. All right, camp set up for night number two. Uh, so as you can see behind me, we've got some clouds coming in. So it's like sunny over there, cloudy over here, blue skies that way. So I don't really know what's gonna happen with the weather. Uh, we're kind of debating, but uh, I think it might uh, get cold and possibly rain on us tonight. So that should be interesting. But yeah, I think it's time to make some dinner, hang out. Uh, that uh, is probably one of the longest six mile hikes <laughs> that exists. <laughs> we think. Um, so yeah, Upper La Barge Canyon. It's uh, it's quite deceptive. It's a dune. Yeah. Good morning, it is day three. We have a beautiful sunrise coming up this morning. Get Picacho Butte in just the right light. All right, back to the map. So uh, right now we're actually camped right here at uh, kind of in the middle of this intersection between Huey Bacon Trail and the turnoff to Brad's Water. So you'll notice we didn't end up going to Brad's Water either yesterday or today, and that's because it turns out we have plenty of water. So we're not going up there on this trip, just kind of trying to save that extra mile of hiking. Uh, but yeah, yesterday we just followed all this up here and today we're just going to follow Hooley Bacon Trail 111 back up. Uh, we're going to pass by Herman Mountain and the other side of Trap Canyon. And then we're going to hike up to Horse Camp Basin, uh, go up to Horse Ridge. And this is actually a pretty good climb up here. I think we're going to hit some kind of high point over 4,000 feet up here, which is actually pretty high elevation for the superstitions and uh, this latitude. So uh, eventually we're going to make our way down into kind of the Cedar Basin area. And uh, then the Hooley Bacon Trail is going to follow Tortilla Creek for a short ways before it connects up with JF Trail 106. We're going to follow that back to the road that we took in on the first day and then just follow that back out. A uh, real simple hike today, about uh, 10 miles, I believe. All right, it's day three. Uh, we're ready to get on the trail. We're just heading back to the car about 10 miles. We're going to start out off the uh, Hooley Bacon Trail heading north going to connect up with JF Trail for a short ways and then road walk that three miles back up where we started. Uh, so yeah, let's get going. We're getting on Hooli Bacon Trail 111, going north.
you might have noticed we didn't end up at Brad's Water yesterday or today. We had actually thought about going up to Brad's Water uh, this morning, uh, but once we figured out how much water we had on us after dinner last night, turned out we had like more than enough to make it back to the car, so we decided not to do the extra hiking to Brad's Water. We just kind of booking it to the car. So far, Hooli Bacon is in way better shape than Peter's Trail, making way better time than that first day. So I am cautiously optimistic we're going to have good trail through most of this day. So I believe this is called Herman Mountain. This big mountain, it forms the one side of the wall of Trap Canyon. So basically we're going to round the right corner of this mountain and they come to the northeast opening of Trap Canyon. And then way out on the left side of Herman Mountain, there's an arch we just noticed way out there. So this shot is pointing just to the right of that big epic mountain range that I just shot. And I believe that is Horse Camp Ridge and that's kind of the direction that we're headed on Hooli Bacon. This is the opening to the northeast side of Trap Canyon. So we pass through the southern entrance of Trap Canyon yesterday, we passed by it rather. There are definitely some caves up there in that mountain. Dave found this like ground nest. It's really interesting. I'm trying to figure out, it must be a bird's nest of some sort. Can't think of what else it would be. Yeah, I've never seen anything quite like that. It's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna keep going up this next pass. As Dave was telling me earlier, we have about oh, three false summits a few 
a kind of small passage to go up and over before we get to the big one, which is the Horse Camp Ridge. All right, so from Huli Bacon Trail, we can see where we were on the first day coming up the pass along Peter's Trail. So the mountain on the right is Tortilla Mountain. And then the one on the left, I don't think that has a name, but that's the one we kind of had on sort of the right of us as we were going up Peter's Trail. Kind of making our way up Horse Ridge. We're kind of what's behind me is Horse Camp Basin. So this is the sort of the big climb of the day. We are making the final push up Horse Ridge, and uh, I've been up this before and. We're gonna have a spot where we basically lose the trail completely and we're just gonna have to sort of route find our way up. Oh. We're trying to sort of find our way up and I saw a cairn kind of uphill from us and finally went up to it and there, lo and behold, there was good trail up here, so didn't think this was even here. So we are at the top of the pass. I don't know if there's a name of this pass, but it's the top of Horse Ridge. Pretty amazing view. Have four peaks and the basin for uh, I think Roosevelt Lake is further down out that this direction. All right, so I have to apologize for the wind noise up here. We're on top of Horse Ridge. This is the view. Looking sort of, uh, I believe this is southish. And uh, actually, I didn't realize this the first time I came out here, but you can actually see the miner's needle way, way, way out there. And then, pretty awesome view out here. Huge looking the other way towards the direction of Roosevelt Lake. Kind of off in the direction we're headed, back towards the car. Cars. And way off in the distance, there's uh, four peaks way, way out there. Pretty hard to see in this view, though. All right, so I don't know, even know if this comes across on camera, but this is a far zoomed in view of the Four Peaks, also known as Brown's Peak, also what the Four Peaks Brewery is named after. Um, so I don't know what this is, if it's just dust or haze, like pollution from the city or what. I've never seen it quite this bad, except when there were active fires going. But yeah, that's Four Peaks that out there is the miner's needle off towards the uh, Peralta trailhead kind of area so from here that has to be about 10 miles away as the bird flies pretty neat that you can see it way out here again super hazy today
All right, so down there is where we are headed into that drainage straight ahead. This is still a rough trail going down the other side. Got a lot of downfall. Some slidey stuff. Snagging on tree. Still making our way down. We're gonna connect up with JF Trail pretty soon. And it's a very short distance from there back to the Tortilla Well area where Peter's Trail is and, and just that short road walk. I mean, I remember coming through here. So it's like a pleasant surprise to see these junipers still standing. I think this is Cedar Basin. So we are pretty short distance from connecting up with JF Trail, but it's fairly unique. You don't really see a lot of this in the superstitions. So you can see that it's kind of a low juniper tree. Getting back into the bushwhacking zone. But it's not terrible. It's more confusing than overgrown. Making our way. We are sort of following Tortilla Creek at this point, I believe. And really close to meeting up with JF Trail. So that's the area that we just climbed up from. It's kind of the Tortilla Creek drainage down there. And eventually that Tortilla Creek 
drainage leads to where we were on day one. So right ahead of us out there, that's Tortilla Mountain where we were on day one. So we've successfully looped around. You don't see this every day in the superstitions. We got to the JF Trail intersection with uh, Cooley Bacon and uh, saw some water cache down here. That's pretty unusual in the superstitions, but it's probably smart. Yep. Hill is all yellow looking now, but earlier this year it was greener than anything I've seen in places that are way greener than Arizona. Okay, we're back to the forest road, so we got a road walk about three miles uphill back to the uh, Tortilla Trailhead. Got a heart-shaped cactus right here. This really cool slick rock out here. It's unlike anywhere else in the superstitions. Really, not a ton of this even in Arizona. There's four peaks. We are within about two miles of the trailhead. We're speculating about what makes up the yellow in these rocks out here. And I think we came to the conclusion, or we think, maybe we're wrong about this, but it's a, a species of lichen, maybe. But I don't know. Somebody in the comments, tell us why these rocks are yellow. So we are almost back to the trailhead, and I don't know how we missed this on our way in, but just check this out. This canyon here with all this slick rock and these pour-offs. And uh, just think about if this color, if this rock was colored red, what it would look like. And this, I imagine, would look exactly like what I've hiked through in the Canyonlands National Park. Exactly like Canyon Country. All right, we made it back to the trailhead. Uh, so yeah, today's hike was about 10 miles. Um, it was a lot easier than the last couple days has been. Uh, it was not nearly as overgrown. Uh, pretty amazing views. Uh, we got that slick rock and all these canyons that we walked through and even had a high mountain pass and some pretty good views of four peaks. So uh, yeah, um, I think this pretty much covered the rest of the western superstitions. So next time it's probably going to be a trip in the eastern superstition wilderness. So. Stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, David, what did you think? I mean, it was great. Um, this being my second time in doing this loop, um, it was more overgrown, a little bit rougher than the last time. Um, you know, we went through a couple tougher spots, but today was definitely the easiest day. Uh, coming back, it was an easy 10 miles back to the car. Yeah, because we, we made pretty good time. Like, Yeah, we I think we left camp around 9, and we're here at 327 right. with 10 miles, so that was pretty decent. Even still going through, we had, I was in the front a lot, clearing out a lot of stuff that had been 
you know, getting in the way, but. Yeah, we had a system, he clears, I film, so. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was great. Come back again tomorrow and do it all again. Yep, even with all the, the, the stuff all over our pants, all over, this, all over our backpacks, so, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that calls it trip for this one, so see you guys next time.